Hey there, this is Kat. And um, today I have a very, very special guest, Elsie Fennard. And if you looked at the notes, you will see that Elsie is going to have a conversation with me about starting your very own podcast. And uh, we will talk about the ins and outs of it and see if we can give you enough information so that you can think about it or at least get started. So let me welcome Elsie Fennard, who is CEO of Pod Podcast Town. So get, um, and so I'm just trying to warm up to all of this and get him uh, included on there. Her, give me a second as I do this. Hey, Elsie. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you? Awesome. Thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I know we've had a couple conversations about podcasting. Uh, I know that, you know, this is your jam and this is your game. And I love podcasting. And I know that there is a process to it. And I'm sure that when you're working with clients, you probably get a lot of typical questions that hopefully we can address some of those today so that if someone is thinking about it, or if they have, you know, like me, when I started podcasting, I don't know how other people are. I talked about it for like over a year, like I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, you know? And so I'm sure you run across a lot of people that when they meet you, they have said that. Right. Oh yeah. I have one person that I work with that literally, and he, he would deny this if he, if he knew I was telling you guys this, but it <laughs> literally took him three and a half years from the time he mentioned that he wanted to start one to the time he actually did it. It was literally like four years. So he'll, oh he'll dispute gosh. that time length, but it was, it was like four years. Okay. So before we get into our conversation, this is just anybody tuning in. Uh, if you have a question, if you have any comments, drop a line so we can answer those for you. Um, again, the, I know this is a hot topic, but if there is anything that you are curious about, you know, while we have Elsie now and you can ask these questions for free, drop a line and make sure you drop a line in the comments. If there's someone who should be watching this, please tag them. Let me know if you're watching this live or are you watching the rebroadcast and just uh, drop me a thumbs up live if you are. And so before we get started, Elsie, can you give everybody a little background about you and um, your business? Certainly. I'll give you the the abbreviated. It's a long story, guys. But um, essentially, <laughs> I, I grew up in audio. Um, I'm a singer songwriter since I was a little boy. Um, I am dating myself a little bit, but my first song I recorded on a cassette tape with a uh, Casio keyboard. Um, and so I sort of uh, did the traditional route grew up, went to school, went to college and got married, had some kids and all the stuff. Um, and I started an internet radio station um, about six years ago and ran across the podcast on accident, fell in love with the medium and decided that this was going to be my career. Um, so long story short, quit my day job and started doing my podcast business full time. So and here we are. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's just start this conversation. So I know that when, and we're going to use me as a hypothetical. Okay. Um, I know when I first started my podcast, the thing I was excited about was you could educate people. You could tell a story, right? Week to week, month to month, however your podcast was going to run. And I was like, okay, that's awesome, especially for industries that really need a little um, knowledge about what you actually do, right? Are there certain types of industries that are a good fit for podcasting? I mean, do you think that this is for everyone or are there certain industries? Well, Kat, that is a low question, right? And me being the <laughs> podcast guy, you would expect me to say, like, everybody should have a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. I think there are certain industries that lend themselves better to podcasting. Um, I will say uh, coaches, consultants, speakers, if you're listening to this and you don't already have a podcast, <laughs> email me. <laughs> yeah, yep. uh, Because it's just such a... A, a cool organic relationship builder, right? And if you're in yep. any one of those 
um, arenas, you're building relationships, right? If you're doing it right. Um, but I will say every business, I made this declaration a few years ago, Kat. I said that in the next five years, if you have a business, you will be in the podcasting space. Now, things have grown so fast that now I'm going to, I'm going to cut that in almost in half. I'm going to say in the next three years, okay, if you're in business, you will be in the space in some form. You'll either be hosting a podcast, guesting on a podcast, or advertising slash sponsoring a podcast. You will be in the space in some form. So hopefully that answers your question. So there are certain oh, no. industries that I think that you should host a show. I always recommend that you host and guest on shows because there are, are advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, but you will be in the space in some form. No, and that's great. And I like that you really narrowed it down a little bit to a, a segment because, you know, I would say my answer would be it's a great opportunity to create original content because me as a marketer and helping businesses in their social media or digital presence, I would say it's great original content that can be sliced and diced, right? Um, okay. So what are some of the biggest objections people have in starting a podcast? What have you heard? Time is usually the biggest one. Um, people don't think they have time. Um, they don't think they have enough to say. Um, they don't. They think that there are too many podcasts already, which is crazy because if you look at the uh, ratio of blogs to YouTube ch to YouTube channels, it's not even close. You know, podcasting right. hasn't even began to approach the the saturation level as those two other uh, channels. So um, I get that a lot. Um, I, I think a lot of people too are unsure how to measure the return on investment still mm -hmm. they're still sort of filling their way around if i'm going to spend time and money doing this thing how do i get my return on investment um one of my things as i always say uh, a big one is return on relationship ror um which is difficult to measure right um when you build a relationship with somebody it may be a year or two sometimes three before you see that return, but that return on um, building those authentic, engaged relationships are oftentimes um, more than we could we, we could imagine. So um, so I think those are the biggest objections this time. Um, people not really understanding how to leverage a podcast to effectively uh, drive sales to their business. And um, again, not really understanding uh, the nuances on how to use a podcast. Right. And I think one of the things that I, I personally had my, my, my little hesitation was, am I going to have enough content, right? Am I personally going to have enough content to uh, entertain, enlighten, or uh, educate my marketplace, you know? And at the end of the day, yeah, I have, <laughs> I have a ton of content because basically for my frame of reference is I, a lot of times, will bring on speakers, write guests, and it's their content that I want to share because they are influencers in their market space or they have um, really great information that is going to benefit my audience, right? And then the other thing is um, a lot of the questions that come up in my one-on-one -on -one meetings, you know, and those are things that I just jot down. I'm like, that's good content. Yeah. Kat, Kat can I share a secret? Oh yeah. <laughs> so here's here's one thing I didn't include in my in my 20 in my two two minute overview of of my life story. So the reason I started my podcast was because I wanted to learn more about business. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I were to email a, a successful business owner and say, "Hey, successful business person, <laughs> can I pick your brain?" They're not answering that email. So my plan was I was I didn't have a goal like I always preach to people have metrics have goals I didn't have any of that stuff when I started mm -hmm. I didn't, the only my only purpose was to learn and that's what I did and so to your point a, a lot of this is is stretching and, and and pulling yourself along the journey as well because you're you're bringing people on your podcast as guests that you you actually want to learn from and that you can grow from so that's a sort of a cheat code yep. um you know I, for example I want to learn more about history so maybe I start a podcast about history so that I can bring on historians and they can teach me along with the audience about history and how to and how to think about it so um so that's a, just a little um, cheat code for free yeah. And so let me do a little shout out to some people who have uh, stepped in and, and joined and made some comments. Uh, Yolaitha, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, and Naimi, 
Uh, I appreciate you joining as well. Thank you. Again, if you guys have any questions, drop a line in the comment. Um, utilize LC's expertise while you have them right here. Um, okay, so let's address the time issue because time is probably something that a lot of entrepreneurs and uh, independent consultants, you know, startups and things like that. So if I had to think about like podcasting when I first got into it, time at first was easy because I blocked it. But then guess what? I got busy and then time became a challenge. So how do you mentally prepare people with the time objection? Well, the first thing I, I typically like to do is to um, is to help them f frame it as something that's important because things that are important, we make time for. I know I do. Things that um, that I find valuable, that are a priority to me, I seem to always find time to do them. And so that's the first thing is, is again, kind of starting with the with the goal in mind. It's like, okay, the goal of this podcast is to, is to serve as anchor content that is going to help you build relationships and ultimately drive revenue for your business. And so that sort of puts it in a priority space. And so mm -hmm. then people think about it as that and not just something that they're doing. Um, the other thing I, I try to do is, um, is to help people with a content calendar, content schedule, and the content plan. Okay. Uh, because I found that when you plan, you tend to uh, have more success than if it's random. <laughs> and so we work together to create that content plan. Um, any repurposed content that we're going to get out of the podcast, that's all planned out ahead of time. And so now it's just uh, clockwork. We record it. Yep. We we know, OK, we're going to repurpose this into a blog. We're going to do a vlog. We're going to do graphics, whatever the repurposing uh, content is. It just happens on automatic every single time. Yeah. OK, so you make a very, very good point that I'm just going to extrapolate from what you just said. OK. And so a lot of people use podcasts for different reasons, okay? And again, I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs, business owners that some of them have podcasts and some of them use it as, again, an education tool, okay, um, as a creative tool uh, and as a lead gen tool. So those are the three I think I've come across for uh, different people who are using podcasts. Are there any other things that people are using podcasts besides those three. Um, I don't know if those are the three common or what you have come across. Yeah, I would agree. But I think if, even if you were to do those three things, um, if you do those well, they're all going to lead to the same ultimate return on relationship, right? Which will ultimately lead to sales, right? So if you're educating yep. people, you're giving them value, they're going to, um, they're going to come, they're going to engage in your content and eventually if they need what you do, they like you, they know you, they trust you, they're going to buy from you, right? Yep. If it's creative, right? If they, yep. if you make them laugh or cry or, or you make them happy, whatever the case is, right? Whatever emotion you ev evoke, when you have what they need, when they need it, they're going to buy from you. So I think to your point, irrespective of, of the, the purpose, um, the relationship factor is the common thread. You're, you're okay. building relationships and those relationships are going to lead to sales down the line. Yep. Okay. So uh, we have a question from uh, Pamela Bain. Pamela Bain asks, how do you measure the ROI? ROI? Uh, so, I mean, ROI is different for everyone, right? It's different for everyone. So it's not always a fin financial number, you know? So how do you teach your um, clients to measure ROI or how do you, how do you prepare them to, to gauge that? Yeah. And my famous answer, uh, Kat, is it depends, right? Uh, for example, <laughs> let's say a client comes to me and they say, Elsie, I have almost zero social presence, um, but I, I kind of think my followers might be on Facebook. OK, so our goal is to increase engagement on Facebook. All right. So we might do a podcast that is edutainment. I heard a, a couple of people using that word. Yeah. It's educational and it's entertaining because ultimately we want people to engage on Facebook. And so in, in the show, we might actually design it so that it's educational in one segment. And then the next segment is just goofy fun. Right. And so even when we're designing the show, we're designing it with the end in mind. And 
uh, ROI is just um, really understanding what your metric is, how we're going to measure this thing, right? And so if our metric is engagement on Facebook, then that's how we know, right? If yep. we put out the first four episodes and we still don't have any engagement, guess what? Our ROI is, is not very good. If we put out the first four and now people are liking, they're commenting, they're um, sharing, now we have a we have a reference and a baseline and now we can grow from there so i think um to answer your question is uh, the first step in roi measurement is having the having the metric having the goal um, yep. and then you want to to um adjust the show and adjust the things that you're doing on the doing on the marketing side to feed into that that metric or their goal yeah and i'm going to help you a little bit with this too because again i have a podcast um the longer my podcast is out there, the more exposure it gets. So I have one podcast that's about sales, you know, how to close that has just hit it. It's over the top. Like, and, um, my assistant who monitors and gives me the metrics on my podcast, she's like, Oh my God, cat, why is this one doing so well? And I go, that is a great question. But next time you need to tell me this one's doing so well so I can do more of it, you know, because if you see, I think you can overanalyze podcasts or anything, any metrics you can overanalyze. But if you can see by analysis that some podcasts are doing better than others, that's a sign like, hey, you should be doing more of those because people love that and they want more, you know, and for me. The ROI for me is that people are down that I see the numbers. People are downloading and people are listening or tuning in because uh, I don't need the gratification to know that is it going to convert or you know anything like that. Because again, I'm an educator and I love educating. So for me, that's my gratification. That oh my god, that one got a hundred downloads or a thousand downloads, you know, whatever. So I'm I'm happy with that, you know, uh, and I think. For ROI in that frame of reference, everybody is different. For some people, it's important. For some people, it's not, you know. Um, so I think people that think about what they're doing and if they want to get into podcasting, they should keep that in mind that not everything you do has to have like this immediate gratification, right? No immediate gratification. That sometimes that when you put these things out there and a podcast lives out there in that universe forever, right? forever <laughs> that that's the cool thing about it right i have yeah. a legacy now <laughs> yeah and i think for for me a lot of times um people tell me all the time that they either heard something i said on a show that i did years ago or they'll tell me that hey you know i i get your emails um right that's one of the the low hanging things that yeah. that you do when you have a podcast is every episode you you want to send it out to your email list um and they'll bring up things that i mentioned in podcasts and i'm like I don't even remember that I said that, but, but thank you for listening. So you're you're de you're definitely right. It's it's um sometimes it's it's uh, a bit elusive, but um but I think again when you when you have that in your your end goal in mind, that's what you you know you you measure. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really really good question. If someone's thinking about a podcast, so can you give a frame of reference of time commitment? And I know in the beginning to create a podcast is there's more time in the upfront, right? Uh, so just to give people an idea, like financial commitment, estimate, broad base, and time commitment. And, and is this a DIY opportunity or should they get a mentor? You know what I mean? So can you kind of wrap that around? Oh, that is a super loaded question because, <laughs> <laughs> because it depends, right? It, and again, I always, always, always tell people start with the why and the end goal in mind, because if it's a hobby, then maybe, no, you don't want an agency, right? Or yep. you don't want to, um, to farm that out. Maybe you want to do it yourself because you want the experience of the journey and doing everything yourself. If it's for a business, Maybe you consider hiring um, a, a strategist, somebody who can shorten the learning curve and do some of the things for you because you want to spend time running your business. So I think, again, starting with the end in mind, understanding, OK, here's why I'm doing this podcast, because that why is going to carry you when you get to about episode, I don't know, nine or 10. You realize that this is a lot of work. <laughs> your why is going to carry you through that. 
Um, and also uh, just really understanding that your why is going to determine what you put into it as well. Yeah. Right. You know, if it's just for fun, you don't want to spend a ton of time doing it because right. you might still have a day job or other things that you want to do. But if it's for your business, then maybe you want to spend a little bit more time on the strategy, on um, sourcing guests and making sure that you're strategic about who's on the show, what you do after the show and things like that. So um, so the broad answer to your question is it really does depend. But when you understand why you're doing it, um, what your budget is, that will determine how much you, time you put into producing it and what you decide to um, contract out, if anything. Okay. So I have two questions and I want to make sure I say them so I don't forget it. Okay. Just cause you know, I'm old like that. <laughs> so I want to make sure I say them, but don't answer them both. Okay. I just answer one and then the other. Okay. Can I choose? Uh, don't, one? don't forget the questions because don't be old like that too. Okay. 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 Got it. <laughs> okay. So one of the questions is, what, because I'm about consistency, because in social media, we have to have consistency, right? And digital marketing, you have to have consistency and marketing. I think. So what is the appropriate consistency that in your belief? And is there a standard, you know, consistency one week, two weeks, you know, monthly, whatever. Okay. And then the, the second question I have is, um, I know when I'm on Zoom calls, okay, uh, it drives me nuts when some people don't have a mic, because I can't hear them. So can you address equipment, especially if, if they hire someone or if they don't? Okay. So the first question first, though. I like weekly okay. um, because it's a really good cadence on people expecting, okay, every Tuesday the show is going to come out. I have some clients that do biweekly, which is also fine. Um, but I would say if you're going to do a biweekly, make sure you have some repurposed content that you can use in the off weeks um, and re be really intentional about what content you're putting out the weeks you don't have a new episode. Okay. Um, in terms of some people do monthly, I don't like monthly. It's a little long. People are, their attention spans are, are short. And so they, they might forget about the show. Um, so I would say weekly or biweekly, but I, I, I prefer weekly. Okay, great. That's awesome. Okay, now I know that you probably heard podcasts out there and audio to me is so important. It's so important. And if people do a dual audio and video, then video is important too. But most podcasts are I know, audio only, but you can do both. So tell me your feedback and your input on the equipment part of it. The so must-haves, you know. Yeah. So here's the thing. You can buy a USB microphone for 80 bucks and sound fantastic. There is no reason or excuse <laughs> for people to use their laptop microphone. Just don't. Just don't. You, you can actually there's a headset you can buy from Amazon for 40 bucks and you'll sound, sound solid. So at least do that. If you're going to guest on somebody's podcast, Please, for the love of everybody that has to listen to it, at least get a headset. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to agree because I would say that, again, I have a lot of meetings on Zoom. And when I when I encounter someone on the Zoom and they don't have a mic or they don't eliminate the noise, you know, with a headset or something, you know, it's annoying because I can barely hear them. And I, I don't want to be like, I can't hear you. Hey, it's not because I'm old. <laughs> it's because I, your audio is really bad. Yeah. You know? and, it, and it detracts from the content, right. And, and the conversation. So. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. Okay. Do you have any favorite podcasts that you follow? You know, people ask me that all the time, and I used to listen to a lot of podcasts for fun, but I don't listen to a ton of podcasts for fun anymore because it's kind <laughs> it's of my it. every day. Like, I'm listening to them all through the day. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I do like um, John Lee Dumas' podcast, um, e uh, Entrepreneur on Fire. Um, he was oh, one yeah. of the first um, podcasts that I started listening to. Um, so I love JL JLD. Um Pat, Pat Flynn is another one that I love. Yep. Um, any of the the podcast uh, 
about podcasts yep. I, I like to listen to um, just because I like to, to stay on, on top of things that are happening in the industry and what other people in the, um, in the field are doing. But I would say those are my top two. Okay. I got to meet Pat Flynn. He signed a book for me. Nice. Yeah. I was so excited when I met him. And that was at the, uh, it was at a MIC military influencers conference. Uh, it was prior to the pandemic. So that was really, really awesome. Uh, okay. As we wrap this up, Elsie, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have asked you that you probably need to speak about in regards to people starting a podcast? Um, maybe around the outcomes that podcasts can provide. Okay. Are you going to elaborate? <laughs> or are you just going to tell me that I should have asked you that? <laughs> well, can I, well, can I ask you the question? What, so what sort of things has your podcast done for you? Because we it talked has, a little bit no, earlier about great. return on investment. So what yep. you have a podcast, what, what have, what has it done for you? Okay. And I love the question. And I love that you threw it right back at me. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So I can tell you hands down, it's created credibility. Okay. I get a lot of followers. So I uh, have a lot of LinkedIn followers. I have a lot of YouTube followers. And uh, here recently now on my podcast channel, I'm getting a lot of now reviews and followers. So it's taken a while, you know, for me to build up the podcast, the audio only, but it's now clicking, you know? So like if anybody is doing it, I think if you stay in the game, the longer you stay in the game, the more it's going to click and more people get um, uh, a hold of your podcast and then they fall in love and then they start following you, you know? Um, so for me, the big wins are, I'm a marketer and I have to come across as I know what I'm doing. So when I put my podcast out there, it really does build my credibility of, damn, she knows what the hell she's talking about, right? I can't, like, I can't poo-poo her. <laughs> so see, I'm sure you probably hear that then. Um, and here's the, uh, the last thing that it does for me too, is I have, I do now get speaking engagements because when people hear my podcast and they're like, she speaks well, she knows what she's talking about. She has confidence, you know, then I have now, um, build myself up as a speaker as well, you know? So I, I opened up that avenue, you know, just by doing podcasts. Yes. So I would say, um, building trust, building authority, building influence, which are the three things that you, you just mentioned. Um, for me, it literally, it, it changed my life. You know, before I was um, working a day job that I hated, it was literally killing me because I was doing that and working my side gig at the same time. And so podcasting gave me the ability to, um, to build a, a business, to build a brand and to um, have people like, know, and trust me. Yep. And here we are today. And so it, it literally podcasting has changed my life um, because it, uh, it gave me the platform to have a voice and to dialogue and have conversations with people from all over the world. I think that's fantastic. So as we wrap this up. <laughs> Our uh, second wrap. That's the, always the risk when you have a fellow podcaster on. <laughs> Well, I want you to have the final words, not me. I want you to have the final words because I want you to tell people what you do, how to get a hold of you, you know, who's your ideal customer or client, future client. Because if somebody's watching now, you know, I want them to have the ability to reach out to you. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, so we are a full service agency. So we help folks um, from everything from launching the show to managing the show to generating leads with your podcast. Um, and the easiest way to reach out to me because I'm always on my phone is via email at mayor at podcasttown.net. Yeah, I've also included your uh, website link on the little ticker too. Isn't that cool graphic? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm an amateur. <laughs> so StreamYard if you're interested. 
Okay. Well, I want to say thank you so much, Alzi. I it was a pleasure to have you. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy, and I know that you know to, to extend a half hour of your day to us is absolutely fabulous. And I'm so very, very thankful. And I, I hope that uh, all of my followers appreciate it, and that they're very thankful. And I want to also thank my followers and anybody who's tuning in or tunes in later because I get a lot of people after the fact. It's a Friday. So this is new for me at 11 a.m., you know? So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was a blast. And I, anytime, anytime. Okay. So let's, let me see how I, I do all this because I'm going to let Elsie go as I wrap this up. Thank you so much. And uh, again, Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And just a little side note in case um, you've missed me or you haven't caught my live. I'm starting this up again. It's every Friday, 11 a.m. And I hope to bring on a lot of guests that are influencers or can really have an impact on your business. So please tune in. Please follow me so that you can get more information about how to stand out and grow your business. You got this.